out on our behalf. Except that mercy had made a way for us. Where I will we be? We will be cast away. Thank you, Lord. Fill my cup. Thank you, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread from heaven, fill me till I want no more. It's my cup, fill it, Lord, and make me all. up your right hand say with me father I am yours I can't hear you say with me father I am yours because of the sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross at Calvary therefore let everything that has worked against me and your relationship die now in the name of Jesus I lose myself. I lose myself from everything that has entangled me and has kept me down. I refuse their persuasions. I refuse to be held bound anymore by them in the name of Jesus. You may sit in his awesome presence. The month of heaven. It's not a popular month. Because heaven is the last thing on our minds. We don't want to hear the things that come with it. Uh, Pastor, we want you to tell us about prosperity. Come talk to us about the fact that the doors of heaven are open unto us. And God is distributing packages. The blessings all around. Pastor, tell us about the fact that we shall be healed. Pastor, tell us about the fact that we shall break through. Pastor, we want you to encourage our hearts uh, in this month because that's what we desire and that's what we want. Tell us what God is doing for us now. The, the month of heaven, it's not the month we are looking forward to. I know. Because we are so busy with the things of this world. Talking about heaven is simply out of place. You know, today in our churches, we hardly talk about heaven. We want to talk about the seven steps to financial breakthrough. Mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, pastor don't you know that my rent is due and I uh, need a financial breakthrough to come into a new level of rent pastor tell me about the fact that I shall be spoken for in no time that a wedding bell shall toll for me pastor tell me about the fact that oh god uh, I will be promoted from my office uh, uh, any moment from now is, tell me what you see about the hand of God walking out in my life his blessings I, I don't want to hear about heaven and you know preachers came up so we, preachers came up and, and in, our, in our teachings and preachings we began to tell you that we have become so heavenly minded that we are utterly irrelevant without teachings we completely take your mind off the fact that hey we are on a journey here let me touch two people say to them this is not your destination this is not your destination this is not your destination when someone is on a journey no matter how sweet that journey is there is a knowing in you that it will come to an end how many of us know that <laughs> two weeks ago I was in Tanzania Russia, uh, it was oh my god, they took good care of me oh, those Tanzanian women, they, they, they know how to take good care of men of God I mean, they will bring you warm water to wash your hands and well, their food was good, by the time I came back I was 17 months pregnant and, and I came back, I, I, in spite of how wonderful it was in spite of how, how glorious wow Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Welcome back home. You know, no matter how wonderful I was treated, I mean, the man of God put me in a sweet hotel, in a suit, but all by myself. I said, my God, this is good life. The bed was something else. But you know, the truth is I couldn't sleep. I knew that that was not home. Then I came back the following week. I checked out. I was in Palm Coast, Florida. They put me up in Hilton. Wow. Good doctor. Too good in a suit. Man of God. I, I said, this is good life. But yet, you know, these things were working in my heart. And I knew that, you know, boy, this is not home. It's only for a week you're going back. So no matter the pressures, I could take them. Because I knew that very soon I was going to run away. Run away to where? Back home. But brethren, many of us have become very foolish. We are thinking that this is all there is to life. God sent us to this world on a journey. And the things we do, the choices we make, the decisions we take, will determine where we will end up. Some of us are taking, making choices and taking decisions that will end us up in heaven. Heaven will be our destination for some of us. Thank you, my sister. Because I, I thought I was talking to unbelievers whose hearts are afraid. If, if heaven is your destination, can I hear you say Amen. Otherwise, church close. Everybody go home because I'm wasting my time here. Heaven, for some of us, we have been taking decisions, making choices, and it will end us up in heaven. We have no choice. For some of us, we have been making choices and taking decisions that will end us up in hell. There's no, there's no gain saying about it. So what do you do here? It's so important. I mean, after our minister's conference, a lot of invitations came to me and they were pleading and begging with me to extend my stay. Say, so how can I do that? Have a definite assignment. And once my time is up, I must leave. And the Lord was talking to me, son, do you know what you're saying? You have a definite assignment upon the face of the earth. And when the assignment is complete or oh, when your time for the assignment is complete where will you live for where are you going to the choices you make now the decisions you are taking now will determine that 
And this morning, I want to just confront you. I want to challenge you. I want to persuade you. I want to beg with you. That you become wise and make right choices and take right decisions. God has done everything he needs to do. He has sent us here to walk in his footsteps. Child of God, when you finish, you will give account. Because you're going back home to your maker. And please hear me, child of God. Home could be hell or heaven. Because God is both in hell and in heaven. Praise God. I know you're thinking about that. Is God in hell? Yeah, he's everywhere. That's why he's God. The omnipresent God. Listen to me, child of God. When your eyes are fixed on a destination, even though many places will appear to be better than where you're going to, uh, even though many places will look like where you're going to, your mind is made up, they are not where you're going to. Now, if that understanding gets to you, it simply helps you to make the right choices and take the right decisions. Otherwise, you will end up where you never planned. I want to first talk about mercy. We all know the story of the prodigal son, don't we? And very often we use the prodigal son to cushion our hearts and argue ourselves out of the convictions of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hear me, child of God. The prodigal son, when he was leaving, when he came to his father to say, divide unto me your inheritance. I have waited for you to die for so long. But you have such a good health. Waiting for you here will frustrate me. Can you please give me that which falls due to me of your inheritance? And he consulted with his father he had no intention he had no knowledge his mind was never involved in the fact that he was going to live the life that he ended up living a man has come to a man a man must find himself a place where he will be the head it's time for me to grow up to become a man daddy could you give me that which pertains to me i want to move away from you i don't want to be under your authority i don't want to be under your supervision i don't want to be under your direction i don't want to be under your control i want to be independent i want to be a man by myself daddy could you just give me that which falls to me of that which you have worked so hard for let me go and become a man no intentions whatsoever but the father had an understanding that this my son is foolish he does not know the world that which you see is nothing compared to what you have not seen there is much more to life than meets the eye. Many of us make assumptions and we come into conclusions that make us completely foolish at the end of the day. This was the situation of this prodigal son. And the father had an understanding because he was an old man who knew far beyond what he saw me. I have seen it as a father. While my sons will come to me and do things and ask for things and say things and I laugh because I know even my spiritual sons, I tell them, listen, you cannot do this. And they argue with me because they think they are men enough and they end up foolish. I've been there. I've seen it before. So I said to them, you know, he who is in the bush first knows the bush better. But the folly of man will always make man think that man knows. All. And so when he left, he ended up in a mess for sin by his father. But you see, there was something in his heart that did not harmonize with what happened so when he came back 
mercy was waiting for him. The Bible says in the days of ignorance, the things we do, what happens? God will wink at. He's the God of mercy. If you know these things, do them. Happy are ye if you know these things and you do them. I'm trying to present to you two scenarios that are different. What you know and you deliberately walk against will bring you sorrow. What you do not know and you fall into, God's mercy will find you. Praise God. So mercy located him. But brethren, over and again, I have seen in church how that Christians use the story of the prodigal son to walk in deliberate rebellion against God. Can you look at your hand? Look at your hand. Look at it. What do you see? As what it is made of. Come on now. Flesh. What happens to flesh when it dies? Hello? Hello? Who has ever seen precious stone rotten? Hello? Come on, someone talk to me now. Who has seen precious stone rotten? Nobody. God took time to make Satan. We find that the things with which he was made are all what? Precious stones. And the breath of the Almighty gave him life. Just as it gave us life. He knew. And it came to his heart. And he said, I will become like the Most High. I will ascend. When he willed against the will of God, he was cast out without an option of mercy. I want you to think about it. Jesus told Peter, you will deny me. Peter said, it's impossible. At the time Peter said, it's impossible. Peter meant every word of it. And the master knew. But Peter was foolish like the prodigal son. In not thinking that the master knew what he was talking about. So when Peter met what the master had described, he will meet. And when he fell, he came back. The master comforted him. Because he knew that in his heart, he had no desire whatsoever to deny the master. But in foolishness, he had done it. When you willfully, deliberately walk against God, you close the door to the door of mercy. John chapter 14. Let's read scripture. Help me turn to two people as you open that scripture and just whisper to them. Secure your ticket. Maybe we'll read one and two together so it could just make a little bit of sense. Don't be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not true, would I 
have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? In my father's house are many mansions. And I go to prepare for you a place. If it were not so, I would have told you. Brethren, heaven is where Jesus refers to as his father's house. That is our final destination. If we take the right decisions and make the right choices. Hell is the other end of the stick. I am not going to try and persuade anybody here this morning. To believe that there is heaven and earth. There is heaven and hell. I won't do that. Because. Even unbelievers. Somehow in their hearts. Know. So when they come into difficult situations. They say this is hell man. When they face challenges and difficulties. They say what the hell. Is that not so? So the concept is understood. That it is not accepted does not invalidate its truth or its existence. It remains. Listen to me, child of God. Whereas in heaven, those of us that will make it will be in company with the 24 elders, the saints that have been translated and the hosts of God's angel in perpetual worship before the throne of grace in hell they will gather with Satan and his angels in perpetual torment having received Perpetual Damnation They will face doom And there will be weeping And gnashing Of teeth I persuade you Secure Your ticket Ordinarily On a Sunday morning On a Sunday morning We should not come to church And in the gathering of believers, spend time talk about the foundational doctrines of our faith. As in repentance from dead works, as in having faith toward God, the doctrines of laying on of hands, these are foundational, brethren. Uh, And I know some are thinking in that direction. We ought to take such things for granted in a church service on a Sunday morning amongst believers. But you know, brethren, I receive in my spirit as we plan the year that pastors have inadvertently given tickets to everybody to go to heaven. And the truth of the matter is that we don't have that right. It's not given to us to give tickets to everybody to go to heaven. We do not have the power. It's not in our place. So, as I look at the modern day realities in the church, oh, to assume that on a Sunday morning everybody in church is a believer will be a foolish naivety and I'm not willing to indulge myself in that type of thing. So, I succumb to God to say, okay, we will set out a month in which we will confront your hearts with the foundational doctrines again. Perhaps those of us that have taken some things for granted may check ourselves 
and realign. In this life, brethren, it is easy to take many things for granted. Who knows what I'm talking about? Have you noticed that you could see some people very well dressed, speak impeccable English, everything about them looks together. Have you seen such people? They may even drive a very good car, live in a big house. Have offices in glorious places, and you look at them and you say, Wow, I would like to be like this man. He seems so together, nothing seems out of place in his life. Foolish assumption because ha, you were not by his side on the bed at night to know that he has not I mean I was just telling you that they put me in a very good hotel and I couldn't sleep praise God I mean when I came out in the morning and they came to pick me for Good morning, sir. I told the guy what's good about the morning. <laughs> you didn't ask me if I slept last night for me to have a good morning. And I told him I didn't sleep. Say what? I said I couldn't sleep. So are you jet lag? I said, No, I don't I don't suffer jet lags. I love to travel, so my body is built to travel. I don't I don't suffer jet lags. But my mind was not together. Many things were working in my mind, so I could not sleep. Apart from the time differences. And yet when I mounted the pulpit, Jesus Christ. Nana Nukula Likiada. This guy has just come from heaven. But the truth of the matter is that there were issues in my life. That I was contented with. Even though I was the oracle of God. And we come into assumptions and say that. No, 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 no. This guy. Until the day I was told. Of a man I know very well. Who went to a strange altar. And was given an egg. To use as a GSM phone to speak to entities that were unseen to be able to arrange his life. I I I, I took that guy to be very decent and civilized. Who cannot do that? And yet we have the foolishness to assume. That all is well for some people. No. Brethren, the church of Jesus Christ, including Guiding Light Assembly at Buddha Worship Center, is full of rottenness. And there is the need for us to come to the middle of God's world and stand to say, well, this is out of place. Lord, can you cut it out and repair it? But I know, I know, no, 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 pastor, encourage us. We are facing situations. Listen to me, my child. No matter how much encouragement you get, and you've been getting encouragement, uh, if your life is not together, if your life is not aligned with God, there is very little you can do because you are bereft of power. You do not have the glory. The unction upon your life cannot function because it is limited by the things you have gotten yourself entangled. I was in Kafanchan last year. My mentor came and told us that Pastor Adeboye prays 17 hours a day. I said, Jesus, Israel, you are a foolish man. What are you doing with life? An old man of 68 can pray. Huh? No, he's 68. 
This is it. If a 68 year old man can pray 17 hours a day and you are just putting in five, where are you, sir? What are you, what are you doing? Foolish Israel. I said to myself, you cannot walk in those waters that you desire to walk in if you cannot pay the price. And, and, and I was struggling with that and then they told me that regularly he will take two weeks and nobody sees him, not even his wife. No wonder what can happen is happening. was asked why do you fast 100 days Jesus fasted only 40 said he said Jesus said these things I do you shall do greater things it's scripture it's a greater things shall you do why because I go unto my father I have released empowerment Brethren, the church is powerless because we have taken our eyes off our journey. We are busy competing with those who are going to the other side of the river. We want to be like them. Meanwhile, we are not on the same journey. We want to act like them, dress like them. We want to do everything like them. We want to be them. And yet, we are not on the same journey. We are not on the same journey. The things they take for granted, we take for granted. And this is the irony. Yet, we want the blessing. We want the glory that they can never get nor be entitled to. And we look at the canalities of blessing. The house, the money, the promotions, and all the things that will be destroyed with the use thereof. And we say, well, it doesn't matter. No, it matters. Because of the complexities of the human life, when medical doctors are trained, their training is designed to take a longer time. Hello? Now, when you give the training of a nurse to that of a medical doctor, what are you doing? Hello? What are you doing? You are cutting corners that you will pay dearly for. Because the nurse, though they are all in the same medical profession, there are certain things that a nurse should not handle. Reserved and preserved exclusively for the doctor. Even in the, as doctors, they have what we call grades. Am I correct? There are the consultants in specific fields so that even though you have been trained as a medical doctor, when it comes to this area, you send for your colleague who is the consultant in that area. Hello? Why? Because he has received a training 
that you have not received. And yet, as far as we are concerned, it's okay to train as a messenger and do the work of a managing director. You cannot get the same results. Praise God. I want to persuade you this morning. Brethren, until you see yourself exactly as God sees you, you cannot begin to imagine what it means to secure your ticket. According to our text in John 14 to the Lord Jesus has departed this world to prepare for us a place. A place in his father's house. Do you have your ticket? Who are those he was referring to as you? Is it everyone that comes to church? Is it everyone that says, Lord, Lord? <laughs> Coming to church, attending church, or being a member of any particular church does not give you a place in the father's house. It does not give you a room, a mansion in the father's house that the Lord Jesus has gone to prepare. These mansions are for specific people. For those who believe in Christ Jesus and remain so believing. So, as I round it up, I'm just breaking it down to two dimensions. But let me say, as I deal with this first dimension, entering in. Church, brethren, is like a market or a hospital. Church. Help me tell anybody. Did you hear what pastor said? People come... To the market or hospital for different reasons. Am I correct? Hello. Let's take the market for example. <laughs> Not everyone in the market owns a store. Praise God. Is that correct? Also, not everyone you see in the market has come to buy or sell. Think about it a while. Because when you see somebody in the market, immediately you conclude that the person has come to buy something. Is that not so? Sell something. It's wrong. Not everyone you see in the market has come to buy or sell. There are those who have come to steal, to kill, or to destroy. That's why suddenly market can go up in flames. Because somebody is very upset with someone who has a store in the market and to teach that person some lesson they set his store on fire and in their wickedness and bitterness they are blinded to the fact that they may not be able to put out that fire and the whole market will go up in flames we know of cases where People have driven to the market, shut down someone and driven off. They didn't go to buy and sell. Oh. Uh, a few years ago, somebody came. In fact, it was uh, Mama Zama. She brought her friend to me. She had you know, shops all over this country and her shops are not selling. <laughs> so I spoke with her. What's the matter? I said, listen, I have shops in Putakot, in Abuja, in Lagos, in uh, Kaduna, everywhere. My shops are not selling. I said, for how long? For months. And as we began to pray, the Lord opened my eyes to see that they've been locked up. I said, wow. These shops have been locked up. Can we... I said, Lord, it will be serious while I'm traveling all over this country to trying to break open this. Can I do it one place? Lord said, no, I'll, 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 I'll allow you to do it in two places. Break the, 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 the one here open. Go to Kaduna, break it, and that's it. Praise God. 
people that went to lock it up didn't do it without going to the market. And those who saw them that they would think they came to buy or sell. No, that's not why they went. That's not why they went. Praise God. They went to lock down someone's business. To God be the glory, we unlocked. And instantly, we have not even left Kaduna when th- the, she got a call that, wow, things are beginning to move. Now, listen to me, child of God. It is stupid for us to think that everyone we see around in the church is a believer. It is also think, I mean foolish for us without truly considering ourselves to conclude that we are believers. That, that's why the month of heaven is to bring balance and, and, and check into our lives. So that at all times our alignment we will check. Have you not seen how that after you remove tire from a car, you need to go to alignment. It's crucial. Some people come to market as tenants. Who say market things are selling. So they go, get a stall, and they begin to sell. They get patronage. Then, after a while, no more patronage. Whilst they were selling, they speak all the good things about Wuse Market. How it is a very good market. How things are very organized. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? And they talk about anybody, they tell Wuse Market, Wuse Market. And then the time comes when market is not moving as they had experience in the past and they watch it. After a while, they say, no, 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 no. I can't stay here anymore. I've, I can't pay this rent. Landlord, please come and take your store. I'm moving shop. I hear that Jabi market is doing well. You know, it's like, it's like politicians. I have permanent interest but no permanent enemy no permanent friend as it is good for me if I stay in PDP now and there is opening I stay if I see that PDP is not working I go to PPA or APP you know the parties are many now we can't even remember which one which one brethren That's what church is. That's what church is. Some, even in this church, the tenants, they came, (laughs) they started by selling their products. How many of us know some of those products? Pity. It's one product they sell. And they push it with lies and gossip. That we buy it, patronize them after a while. Then once we discover that, ah, this can't go on again. Huh? We stop the patronage. And then they stay a while, they stay a while. It's bad market. They move. They go to Jabi market or Mami market. <laughs> Uh, this is not a good market anymore. And whilst they were here, if you see what they were saying about this market, very good market. I mean, wow. The chairman of the market is a, such a wonderful man. And his wife, a darling. Everything is there is, is, is very all right. And then suddenly, market goes back. They leave. Uh, others came here. Uh, what did they want? They wanted breakthrough. They came because they felt that 
miracles will happen they came because they felt that healings will take place some came to find a good sister who is working in the bank to marry just to get a meal ticket and survive Abuja others came so that they can find a good looking uh, husband to marry and then you know they stay after a while it's not working and then some came so that you know uh, they will show razzmatazz and then pastor will make them a pastor and then they will be given a branch and then they stay for a while and then some came listen there was a time in this church we had a minister of the federal republic <laughs> people came to church and his wife was the head of department that was the biggest largest department everybody was done in that department just to get close to the minister I watched. I see. I see. This is very interesting. I watched. I watched. As soon as the man was left, he left office. The department started dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. They st- they stopped coming to church. Not just the department. They stopped coming to church. Brethren, when we come to church for what we want to get, we haven't come to God. And church is as dry and disappointing as it can be. Because church is nothing, brethren. Church is merely the gathering together of them that have come to God. So, take God out. Church is useless. It's another gathering. I mean, don't we gather in Millennium Park? God, this morning, you will see gathering there. church with an agenda and our agenda is what motivates us our agenda is what pushes us it's what we are looking for that moves us to do things that we do not because we love god oh there was a time when people encountered jesus and there was a definite change in their souls they will come to church not because anyone is asking them to come to church they will come to church not because anyone is encouraging them to come to church they will come to church because they know that they must not forsake the assembling together of the saints they come to church because they know that they will get a word that will cause their lives to go forward in their work with god they will come not looking for what anybody will give to them but what it is they can do for god there was a time when we came to church after church nobody wants to leave because we enjoy the fellowship of one another when we came to church there was a time when we could cry and open up our hearts in truth to god but no more now we come to church is the music all right uh, let me check the music i don't think the music is nice in this church does the pastor whoop if it's not a whooping pastor it's not it's not compliant it's not i, I can't i can't stand those pastors uh, does it dress well if it's not a pastor who dresses well i, I don't think i want to be there is it a happening place what is the happening place where there are many babes Where there are many babes and the babes are available the babes are looking corporate the babes are driving the best cars the babes are the ushers the babes are the choir people the babes are everywhere and then we come in our suits uh, brothers i'm on your case now and now we come in our suits and we look very corporate and we set up and set down and we're looking for who will be the next victim we haven't come to god Where a sister will come to church because she has a crush on the pastor. Sit down and open up her legs. Let him just look beyond. Let him just look beyond. What type of church is that? And we say we are going where? (laughs) Brethren, (laughs) that you walked into Amigo supermarket does not mean you will come out with something. Must 
must be our reason. God must be our motivation. So that whether it rains or it does not rain, how can rain stop me from going to gather with brethren to worship my God? Uh, but now if the rings come, I <laughs> won't have this crowd. Because it's raining now, Pastor. Can't you see it's raining? Brethren, it ought not to be so. To enter in, you've got to believe him. And we know, I have said the sinner's prayer. Ah, Pastor, I've said the sinner's prayer. After all, Romans chapter 10, 9 to 10 says, For with the heart, man believeth. If you believe with your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and that uh, 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 and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made to what? Salvation. But, uh, but the question we have not answered is can a woman be pregnant and not be seen to be pregnant? Come on now. Can you be naked and everybody will think you are wearing clothes? Hello? We will see you that you are a believer. We will see that you are a believer. So Jesus said it. Don't be deceived by the look of the tree. Look at the fruits. Pastor, I may believe, all right. Who is leading you? Because it is not those who come to church that are the sons of God, but those who are led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8 14. If we are led by the Spirit of God, what are we doing with that gossip? Come on now. Killing one another with back biting and backstabbing. Can the Spirit of God backbite? You know, all of these things begin to work in my heart to bring some trepidation that, hey, are you sure? He said, in my name they shall cast out demons. But today, demons are casting us out. No, 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 no. That's the truth. Demons are casting us out. It says, in my name, they shall take up serpents. It's, it's not limiting us to physical serpents. Every day we are dealing with serpents and scorpions that he has given us power to trample upon and overcome and yet we are falling victims to them. Shouldn't we check ourselves? Say if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. And yet many of us are victims to all kinds of poisons. All kinds of poisons. I was praying for somebody. <laughs> Say, Pastor, this thing came. They placed it on a seat and I sat. I said, Excuse me. Let's just pray because I don't want trouble. Don't start something. We prayed, took care of the person. And said, Pastor, but when I mentioned it, I said, It tells the level of your spirituality. When they will put something on the chair and you see that anything will affect you and the thing will not die. This thing ought to die. It ought to die. How can you carry the Holy Ghost? Jesus is in you. And you match something that is poisonous. And it harms you. It ought to tell you that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, you are not aligned. You are out of order. Says they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall
shall recover. <laughs> it is sick that is laying hands on us these days in church. It is sick, sickness that is laying hands on, on us. And you know, we have the audacity to say, yeah, 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 there's no power in the church. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I just feel like giving someone a slap. Because, have you checked yourself before you are condemning someone else? Have you taken time to consider your ways? To know whether you are in the faith. judging others but never looking at ourselves even when Jesus pointed and says listen look at the pillar in your eyes look at this heavy pillar say it's in your eyes Consider, you know no this one is not big look at that big pillar this big one say you are there's a pillar this type of pillar in your eyes remove it before you take out the speck in your brother's eye imagine just a speck of dust but with our pillar, we will see the speck in someone's eyes. And we will not see the pillar in our eyes. To enter in, brethren, you must secure your ticket. To enter in, you must do what? Secure your ticket. Jesus paid the price for that ticket. You didn't pay anything for it. You don't have to pay anything for it. But at all times, because he has given it to you, you must make sure that you still have it. It is even wisdom to consider whether the one you got the first time is the original. Because there are photocopies. How can you encounter Jesus and you will not know that you have encountered him? Are you born again? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's like I'm born again. I was I was a drunk. I mean, those of us that come from rivers and bias are we know ourselves. God gave us strong heads to hit alcohol without pity. And I hit a call so hard as a young man grew up in it. <clears throat> and then I encountered the Lord. And one of the signs was that the thirst for alcohol disappeared. I didn't go for any deliverance. It left. I was the woman's man. Everything in skirt attracted me. If it has shape, it has to have shape. It has to have shape. Everything in skirt. Once it has shape, it attracted me. With a big backside to go. Those were my were my cushions. And because I was a Potakot boy, I had what it takes. I barely knows what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? We don't have to set up and sit down, position ourselves. And we can persist until we get what we are looking for. Brother, this was a sickness to me. Because if my girlfriends reduce to five, I get agitated. At any point in time, they must not go below five. I'm telling you what, what life I lived. And I encountered Jesus. And I didn't go for any deliverance. The, the desire left. And I stand before God to say, I have known no other woman since I gave my life to Christ except my wife. Because I had an encounter that, that brought a change. an encounter I preached to my friends they thought I was a madman I, I, I laid hands I, every madman on the way I wanted him healed 
That's what the Bible said. I couldn't rest. What has happened to us today, brethren? We do mass salvation. You know when you do mass production? <laughs> One size, that's it, fits all. There is no individual encounter, no uniqueness, no testimony. So shouldn't we check our ticket whether it is photocopy? And you know, photocopy, brethren, after a time, have you observed that the things written on it begins to fade away? Let me tell your neighbor, check your ticket, check your ticket. Is it a photocopy or original? Stay entered. Help me tell your neighbor. Stay entered. Stay entered. Pastor, does it mean that someone who gets born again can lose their salvation? Yes. Yes. Now, this is a doctrinal issue. I am one of those who believe with all my heart. And I preach it. You know I have told you that here over time. I believe. That once saved. Saved forever. I believe with all my heart. That once. I am a believer. A believer forever. So what am I saying? Hello. What am I saying? I'm saying that child of God, no one can take you out of the kingdom. Can you open with me to Romans? No one can take you out of the kingdom. Romans chapter 8. I need for you to see this one and read it with me. Romans chapter 8. 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall do, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So brethren, I believe with all my heart that once born again, Forever born again. I believe in eternal security. However, brethren, I know that I, Israel, Warianime Abam, can choose to deny my faith, renounce it, and walk out of my salvation. Just as I know for myself, I know that you, you and you can, yes, you can, you can deny your faith, renounce it, walk out of your salvation. By choice. So whereas Satan cannot do it. His angels and principalities cannot do it. Nothing can do it. You. Can do it. Pastor is that not contradictory? No it's not. You can. And you know. This is the. Fearful aspect. To deny my faith, I don't have to say anything. But simply walk in rebellion against God. I don't have to say, I renounce my faith. Jesus, I renounce you, I renounce you, I renounce you. No, I don't have to say that. All I simply need to do is to walk in rebellion. And how do you walk in rebellion? You walk in rebellion by constantly and consistently refusing the leading of the Holy Ghost. Number two, you walk in rebellion by putting the Lord to an open shame. Can you open it to your Bible, Hebrews chapter 6? Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6. I'm trying to round up now. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word in, uh, of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves 
the son of God and put him to an open shame. Now, I know what Matthew Henry says and most of the commentators have said on this. I know. But they all come to the point to agree that hey, it's a possibility. I like the way the message Bible puts that scripture. Once people have seen the light, gotten a taste of heaven, and been part of the work of the Holy Spirit, once they personally experience the sheer goodness of God's word, and the powers breaking in on us, if they turn their backs on it, so you can turn your back on God. Washing their hands off the whole thing, you can wash your hands off your faith. Well, they can't pretend as if nothing has happened. That's impossible. Why? They've crucified Jesus. They've repudiated him in public. They've repudiated him in public. By your conduct. By the things you do. I said it at the beginning. When you deliberately. Knowing what is right and wrong. And choose to do what is wrong. Oh God is the God of mercy. You understand I'm only but flesh. I mean, people have said to me. Pastor we will do this and after we will repent. How many times have you come to the place of sin in temptation? And the Holy Spirit is tugging along your heart. Tugging away at your heart saying, don't do this. Don't do it. Don't do it. And you say, I will do it. Because greed has taken you over. And you do it. Then after you come and say, I'm sorry. Excuse me. They should slap your mouth with that sorry. See, abandoning my faith in him and putting my faith in someone else or in something else. Very dangerous. We think we believe in God. Many of us actually believe in ourselves. We believe in our connections. We believe in our positions, in our wealth, in our strength, in who we know. We believe in what we can do. Oh, don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong in believing in yourself. But your believing in yourself must be rooted in him. Because without him you can do nothing. That's what John 15 says. But our confidence is more in us. Not in him. Because if you are confident in him. You will not take that decision without praying about it. When I do such things, I throw away my ticket, even though religion makes me think that I still have my ticket to my mansion in my father's house. Brethren, as I close, I want us to look at one more scripture. Open with me to Matthew chapter 8, 11 to 12. Matthew chapter 8. I close. The Lord himself said, this is Jesus talking. Not Paul, not Peter. The word himself talking. And I say to you, that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom, what will happen to them? Into what? There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because they lost faith in him. Sons of the kingdom, secure your ticket. Keep your ticket secured. Be circumspect. Stay in the faith, not merely by what you say, 
but much more by what you do as a result of your faith. Paul admonished us as he said to us, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. It was given to you free of charge. You owe it to yourself and God to refuse to throw it away. Can you buy your hands? Can you buy your hands? I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are. But I want you to think a little while. Fear caught me. The day Jesus quickened my heart to his word. And he said, son, many will come. And say, ah, we cast out demons in your name. We did miracles. We demonstrated your power. He says, I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You are lawless. I don't know you. Apostle Paul, having that in mind, said, I will not preach the gospel and I become a castaway. It's your ticket. Genuine. Is your ticket still intact? Do you still have it? Are you still a believer? Check yourself. And if not, there is mercy. Because he says, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You can own up to say, Lord, I have goofed. I really have messed up big time. Have mercy. I commit myself to a new lease of life under your leadership, under your guidance. Grant me grace to walk the straight and narrow path. Perhaps you are in this house and you've never ever come into a covenant with him. You've never ever come into a covenant with him. I want to give you an opportunity. You want to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I, I want to lead you in that prayer. If you're here in the house, you could just leave your seat and come straight to me. And let's quickly talk to him on your behalf. So that if you die today, you know your ticket is with you. You know you have your ticket in your hand. Because without a covenant with him, you cannot make it. Are you in the house? Would you like to rise on your seat and come and meet me right now? I'll pray for you.